Well, hello, good morning, and welcome to church here at C3 Reflect today. My name is Sats, my wife Emma and I. We are the lead pastors of this local church, and uh, so nice to get to share these moments. Thanks for tuning in. Let me just say super quick, if you are brand new today or not yet connected for whatever reason, please do hit subscribe just so we can keep arriving in, uh, yeah, in your digital space with some things that are going to encourage you and lift your faith and help you um, and also please do go to the website c3reflect.church slash connect and uh, you can jump on our mailing list as well it's good to be connected I find um, you know getting into the ecosystem uh, of a church is it's a really important thing um, and you're going to find that just a little bit of osmosis is going to come your way <laughs> without trying too hard you're going to find yourself getting connected to people getting encouraged so uh, hey it's it's awesome and so um, so cool that we get to share this moment as we are actually um, right at the end. We're calling it the finale, why not, um, of our Vision Builders series, uh, the finale. And um, I'm going to just bring a message, just encourage you uh, from the Word of God in just a few moments. But um, hey, gosh, thanks for joining us for these last six weeks as we've been, as we've been just exploring um, what, what, what sort of church do we want to be? Uh, what church do we want to be a part of? What do we want the future to look like? like as a church and uh, we shared in week one in our vision builders presentation we just shared uh, quite a lot about where we are right now as a church post pandemic um, you know navigating this this brave new world and um, understanding where we are and, and getting a sense of where we believe God is calling us um, to be in our future and uh, so excited about relaunching weekly services across two locations about strengthening um, our structure as a multi-site church and investing in digital evangelism and so um, all of that's in week one in our presentation which has been awesome and um, we, we shared about how everything that we do as a church is created by 22 amazing people who sow something in the region of 220 pounds each um, each month to, to make the life of the church happen and um, we worked out that hey the gap between where we are and where we want to be is just 14 people um, doing the same thing and so gosh it's been a journey of transparency of openness of just conversation and just um, I'm so excited that we're going to be just building the future together that this is our church this is not just my church M's church but you know this is really something that we have ownership of together and that together we're going to enter um, into the future and so here we are on week six and it's like I don't know, we just left a lot of space for the Holy Spirit to speak to you and encourage you and, um, I don't know, just, just bring some, um, some insight into what that looks like for you. Um, but we're really coming to the point now where we thought we actually do need to set a bit of a, a deadline. We need to make some concrete plans and uh, we're excited over the next couple of weeks to be able to share um, more about what those plans are going to be, what that's actually going to look like. And today we're just going to draw the line and say, hey, let's um, jump on board. Uh, if you're going to jump on board, you need to jump on board today <laughs> for Vision Builder. So I'll create some space for that at the end of the service and we can do that together and really uh, as a bit of a holy uh, moment. But hey, let me, let me just just um, encourage you with the word of God today. Um, I'm going to bring a message and the title of the message is this. It's I know that I know. Maybe you want to write that down. Maybe you want to take some notes, lean in to today. I know that I know. And uh, we've been delving into some of the teachings of Jesus over the last few weeks. He loves the Bible. Gosh, the Bible's amazing. And um, this is what Jesus says in, in Matthew chapter 7, um, verse 7. He says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. And the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be opened. Or which one of you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Bad dad. <laughs> or if he asks for a fish, we'll give him a serpent. Even worse. Um, if you then who are evil know how, much to, how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. 
Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many, for the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life and those who find it are few. Uh, just amazing passage of scripture by Jesus. And I, I just, church, I just love, I, I love the heart of God towards you today. You know, because there's so much in there about prayer and uh, desires of your heart and how we approach God and all sorts of things we're going to unpack in a few minutes. But let me just, just open on that thought that God's heart and God's hand is open to you. I, I don't know where you are right now. I, I don't know how you've traveled into this moment. I, I get a feeling there'll be a whole range of people. Some of you are going to feel super holy, super close to God. You've been reading your Bible. You've been praying. It's awesome. And, and some of us are going to feel a little bit drier and maybe a little bit dis disconnected even, maybe even just completely away from God right now. But I want to speak over you right now that, that God's heart and God's hands is open towards you. I love this, this, this promise from Jesus says, if you ask, if you seek, if you're not. See, God, God loves you. <laughs> it might sound basic, but, but God really does actually want to bless your life. He, he wants to help you. And so I love this promise from Jesus that is helping us understand God's heart for you and I. He's not here to get something from you. He's not here to manipulate, extort. He doesn't need anything. He's God. <laughs> he doesn't need us, but he loves us. He loves us not because of what we do, but because of who he is. And you know, we've got four kids. They're awesome. And, uh, but you know, our kids like, sure, it's great when they do what you want them to do. <laughs> it's great when they listen. It's great when they're obedient. It's great when they, they do things that, that make you pleased. But there's a difference between the, the pleasure of God on the actions of your life and God's heart for you. God loves you. There's nothing you can do that is going to change God's heart and his hand is open towards you right now. And I, I realize when it, when it comes to prayer, when it comes to faith, that's such an important posture that we bring that into uh, our approach because otherwise we're not gonna expect to receive anything from God because we're like, well, why, why, who, why does God care about me? No, God cares about you because he loves you. And so when we pray, when we seek him, we're gonna find he is gonna respond. The heart and the hand of God is open towards you. I love that Jesus is kind of describing this process of how God answers prayer. He talks about asking and he says, you know, when we ask, you'll receive. I mean, it'd be great if it just stopped there. And uh, some people do just stop there. They just go, that's, that's all I need for today. I'm just going to ask and it's going to be done. And that's it. And, and you know, there, there are moments in our lives where we ask God. And I'm sure maybe you have some stories where you've asked God for something. And it's just happened. Like it's, it's not been a long conversation. It's not even been a very like big prayer, but it's just happened. I remember Samson, who's our, our second uh, kid. He's four years old. And a few months ago, uh, he was having some nightmares as many four-year-olds do. And uh, we were talking about it before bed. And he was saying, Daddy, I don't want to have these dreams, all this stuff. And so I said, why don't we pray about it? Because to be honest, I didn't really know what else to do. <laughs> like, I, I don't know, like we, we don't watch a lot of like TV. Well, that sort of TV that's gonna give them nightmares. And uh, I was just like, I don't really know what to do. So let's pray, let's pray. So why don't we ask Jesus right now to take the dreams that you've been having that have not been good and to give you some of the best dreams Ever. What would you describe as the best dreams ever? And he begins to tell me this is a Lego dream, this fire a truck dream, you know, <laughs> all of these different dreams involving construction vehicles and things that four year olds are really into. I was like, that's awesome. So we prayed this prayer and I, I prayed it and I said, Samson, you repeat, you repeat after me and you pray. Because I wanted to, I didn't just want to pray for him, I wanted to teach him how to pray so that he was involved in the process. And, and we prayed this prayer together and you know, the next day I'd kind of forgotten about it, to be honest, and Samson bounds into our bedroom. It's like, Daddy, I had the best dreams ever. And he starts telling me, and you know, you know, like when you have a good dream, you can normally remember like one or two, it's a bit fuzzy. And he was articulating like six different scenarios. <laughs> this happened, or this happened, and it was amazing, and we got to do this. And I was just like, how cool is that? God is a God that answers prayer. And there are times when we ask and we simply receive. 
But who knows that sometimes it's not just as simple as that. And actually, in my Bible, it's not a full stop. Jesus, it's like a semicolon. It says, ask and it will be given to you. Semicolon. <laughs> it's not the end of the sentence. I know we want life to be easy. I know that it would be great if that was just simply it. But he says, seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. He says, seek me. You know, there's, there's clearly got to be some parameters around what we ask. Let's be honest for a moment. In fact, Jesus goes on to say pretty much straight after you, there's, there's actually a, a narrow gate. Following Jesus is narrower than if you're not following Jesus. It's harder. There's, there's restriction around God's design for your life, not because he's a killjoy, but actually because life is narrow. <laughs> and some of the things out here may not be good for us, may not enrich our lives. We might like them in the moment. But, you know, I've played, played plenty of prayers that God has an answer that I've been pretty glad about. <laughs> <laughs> particularly as a teenager, <laughs> like there's, there's, there's prayers that, that God is not going to answer because God knows best. And so God wants us not just to be, you know, just p- children who ask. God wants us to be in conversation with him, people who seek him so that we would understand the way that he thinks. So that when it comes to prayer, that we wouldn't just be, God, give us that. God, give us that. God, open up that. But, the, but we would be in, in, in a, a deep relationship with our father. Father in heaven who wants the best for us, that we would understand and get wisdom for our lives. See, I love this whole process is actually a process that is about producing faith. God doesn't want just, you know, yes, no, go, do. He he doesn't want a limited robotic relationship. He He wants to produce faith. And the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. So what's faith? Faith, Hebrews tells us, also in the Bible, says that faith is is the confidence, the assurance, the evidence of things that we don't see. In other words, uh, God speaks to us about something that is not yet a reality, that we can't see in the natural, but it's something that God is going to do. God spoke to Abraham and said, I'm going to make a mighty nation out of you. I'm going to give you a son. I'm going to give you an heir. And it was, it was impossible. It, it was not real because Abraham was pretty old and his wife Sarah was pretty old and it didn't look very likely that this thing was going to happen but God spoke it and the Bible says that, that Abraham believed in his heart and it was it was faith it was credited to him as as righteousness and there's there's this tangible uh, thing that that there's faith in our lives and when God speaks and, and when we go through this process with God we find that it actually produces faith on the inside of us and here's here's where we can get a bit caught up church because often when we come to praying we kind of feel like we need to have faith already and so we we kind of come to God feeling like I've got to have everything sorted I, I've got to know exactly what I need I, I, I've got to tick all the boxes and so we can come in a little bit trying to fake it till we make it we can come in with, with like yeah yeah and we're naming and we're claiming and we're, and, we're, and we're coming in with this this confidence but it's not always faith sometimes we're not sure <laughs> sometimes we don't know but faith is certainty Faith is absolute confidence. Faith is knowing that you know. Faith is, is it's like, well, how, how do you know? I just, I just know. I just know that God has spoken. That's, that's that process of faith. And so as we're approaching God in prayer and as we're approaching God for direction and understanding about our future, what, what road should I take? What decision should I make? Should I go there? Should I do that? What should I change? Is that good? Is that bad? All of the endless questions that we have in our lives. Here's what I, I know, church, is that God actually wants to speak to you. God wants to speak to you about the future. He doesn't want you to, I love that third bit, it says knock and, and, the, and it will be opened. You know, that's talking about, um, you know, when the opportunity is there. God's like, all you got to do is just have courage, knock on the door. You know, uh, <laughs> you know you've got to go to the job interview <laughs> to get the job. That's kind of how it works. You, you've got you to approach that person if you want to start a relationship. You can't just, God can bring that person in, but if you're not willing to have a conversation, if you're not willing to 
ah, oh, you know, have a little courage and just step out, you're gonna find that the door is not gonna open. And it's almost like some of us are living our lives just knocking on doors. It's just like thousands of doors, we're just knocking. It's like one of these doors is gonna open. And that might be working for you, but you're gonna find it's gonna tire you out. It's gonna be an exhausting life and so many people. We talk about the hustle and yeah, we're just hustling, we're just going and we're just smashing this thing out. But you know what I realized, church, is that God wants to speak to you about which door to knock on. God, the Holy Spirit can tell you about things that are gonna happen. There is a whole process that God wants to use and take you through where we ask and we seek. And the thing about seeking is, seeking is like, you know, it's, it's not quite as quick as asking. You know, like asking God doesn't take very long, but seeking God, oh man, that sounds exhausting. Like who's got time for that? Today in the 21st century is 2021, almost 2022. How am I gonna seek God? What we're going to find is that when we are people who seek God, God is going to speak to us. And when God speaks, we're going to receive faith in our spirit. And that faith is going to give us absolute certainty about things that you, you and I have questions about. And I, I just see right now, some of you have got questions. <laughs> some of you have got frustrations that are unresolved from your history, even not a long time ago, near current, present history, thinking, God, I don't understand that. What's going on there? There's some tension. There's some frustration. And God would maybe just say to you today, would you seek me? His hands and his heart is open to you. He's not holding anything back today, church. He's not, he's not hiding answers. He's not keeping you in the dark. He's just simply waiting for a little bit of hunger. Because there's a process he wants to lead you on. It is about producing faith in you. It's actually about who you're becoming. God doesn't want you to be the same person. He wants to, you to grow into the, the fullness of who he's called you to be. The fullness of the image of Christ that he's got for you. And so God is trying to lead you on this process. We can't escape the process. There are sometimes things God just opens just like that, but there is a process that God is trying to take us on that is about blessing our life. And I see people right now and you, you, you've given up. You've given up on asking some questions. You've given up on, on, on a couple of topics, a couple of things you just thought, I don't know why, but God hasn't answered. I asked and I haven't received. I reached out and I didn't hear back from heaven. I, I call out to God and God would simply say, come on, seek me, seek me. Get some clarity, seek wisdom, reach out again. Don't give up because I'm ready and I'm waiting, but there is a process. I'm trying to enrich your life. I'm trying to speak to you. I'm trying to produce faith on the inside of you. You know, I realize that, that faith almost always reduces our options. You know, there's great wisdom sometimes, isn't there, in not having all your eggs in one basket. I'm not talking about, you know, not being wise and not thinking about alternatives and plan Bs and all those sort of things, but I realize that, that, that when God speaks, we have a choice. Am I gonna take him at his word? Or am I gonna look out for another option? And God, God wants us to be people who live like we know that we know. He wants you to have clarity about your future. He wants, he wants you to be prepared for your life. He wants you to be an effective witness when things kick off and when crisis comes, that he would be speaking already. You'd have words of encouragement. You'd have the right things to say wherever you are, that you'd be prepared for the, for the, the journey that God has for you and that the future that God has for you, you'd be able to walk into all of his goodness and all of his blessing. Why? Because you've got faith on the inside of you. I, I, just, I just see that God wants you to be confident in your future. So many of us and so many people in our world are walking through this, with this life with incredible uncertainty. And the thing about uncertainty is it produces anxiety, it produces fear, and it starts to disturb us on the inside. And we can experience all sorts of things as a result of that in our lives. We can lose sleep over these things. We can, we can break relationships over these things, over the edginess in our life. And God wants to bring peace. I just see somebody right now, and you, that's you right now. You, you, you're not sleeping well. And God wants you to know that there, there is peace for you. There's rest for you. you. You can have a full night's sleep.
It's part of his will, it's part of his desire for you, but maybe there's a process, maybe there's some seeking, maybe there's some asking, maybe there's some things you need to deal with. God wants to address, he doesn't wanna just brush them under the carpet to resurface in a couple of decades time, he wants to deal with those things right now in this moment. He loves you too much to leave you where you are, he's leading you into your future. And, and you know, uh, when we think about faith, sometimes we just think about life's gonna be perfect. You know, we can just ask God for whatever, but no, no, the, the process is sometimes painful. The process is sometimes difficult. Life is, is not without suffering. We live in a broken world and God's like, well, we might as well use this stuff <laughs> to produce some good. It says he works all things for the good of those who love him. Which means that, that those who don't love him, it doesn't necessarily work. God is working when we love, when we seek him, when we obey him, when we come to him, when we draw near to him, God is able to work those things. Everything that we've experienced, every single detail of our lives, God, present, past, future, God can use it for your good. Our church, I hope you can sense God's heart for you today. His heart and his hand is open. And here's the wonderful thing about God's process, is it's a process. You haven't missed the moment. You haven't missed your opportunity. Maybe you disconnected. You laid that one down. You didn't push through. But you know what I just sensed? God wants to remind you that at any given moment, you can rejoin the process. You can rejoin the party. You might be far from God right now. Can I just encourage you? You can be close to God right now. It's a decision of your will to draw near. And there are some things that, that have been so big that are unresolved. God wants you to resolve those things with him. He wants you to come at him. He's not afraid of your questions. He's not afraid of your past. He's not afraid of your emotions. You don't have to put up this plastic, fantastic picture to God. Come to him as you are. Watch and see as he will speak and bring peace and healing into your life. You can rejoin the process wherever you are, whatever you're facing, whatever you're experiencing right now. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. I, I see, I just see futures opening up right now. I see good futures, stuff that was just closed down, doors that were locked. I just, I just see a church right now that is being released, that has been freed. Come on, I'm prophesying right now. There's freedom today. There's freedom for someone today. There's freedom today to be free from, from things that were under lock and key. There's freedom right now in the name of Jesus. Hey church, let me, let me pray for us as we just close in this message. And then in a few moments, we're gonna just uh, spend a few moments on our vision builders, um, just our opportunity. But I really just wanna pray just uh, this message. I just know there's a few people who are far from God. My favorite scripture, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. I, I think I say it every single week. <laughs> it's because I say it to myself every single day. It's, you know, you just wake up, you don't always feel close to God. You can have the best yesterday and wake up today and I don't know what happened. It's just everything's a bit achy and everything's a bit dry. And just, I just love that any given moment, wherever you are, you can draw near to God. He won't push you away. He'll welcome you in. He'll welcome you in with open arms. It's the Holy Spirit, I pray right now of every person, every person who's far from you. God, I pray that you would, that they would sense your presence. They would sense your peace. And God, where there are questions, where there are frustrations, God, where there are things that need to be resolved, God, we make the decision right now not to disconnect, not to pull away, but to come close. To come close in the name of Jesus. Jesus says this in Matthew, he says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. God, if that's you right now and there's heaviness in your life, I want to pray for you. Just wherever you are, just take a moment. I know online, sometimes it's difficult to, to create space for that, but whatever environment you're in right now, maybe just close your eyes. Maybe just lift your hands to God. I wanna pray for rest. Some of you are, maybe you've been knocking on those doors, searching for the will of God, knocking on those doors, searching for your purpose. You've been looking everywhere, but it just feels like, where is it? I can't find it. I can't find my future. I, I don't know what decision to make. I believe right now the Holy Spirit is going to 
bring you on a journey. For some, it's going to be right now. God's going to speak to you about something. Others, this is going to be just the restart of a process, of a discipleship journey that you need to complete. So just wherever you are right now, just, just take a moment and open your heart to God. Holy Spirit, oh, we thank you for the spirit of rest. You've not given us a spirit of fear, anxiety, worry. You've given us a spirit of rest, a spirit of power and a spirit of love. I pray, Holy Spirit, right now that you'd fill every person with a great sense of your love. Your presence would fill them right now. God, fill their mind, fill their imagination. God, we let go of every worry and every fear. We thank you right now that we can seek you. That you have everything that we need. And I pray, provide for every person, every, every lack that is making us worry, every opportunity that we need, every relationship that we need, everything that we need, the material, everything in our mind and our emotions and even in our body, our physicality. God, I pray right now that you would provide for every single person in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Church, God is so good. <laughs> I just, I hope you can sense God's heart for you today. And um, take some time this week. Take some time to make sure you soak in the presence of God, enjoy God's presence and ask and to seek Him. He wants to answer your prayers. Uh, he does. He does. So, hey, uh, we're here right now in this moment as we just kind of close with our Vision Builders finale. And uh, as I said earlier, we've taken the last six weeks just to talk about the sort of church we want to be. We've painted a picture of where we want to go. Um, we've shown and shared about where we are. And uh, we're believing right now for 14 people to jump on to be a part of that core team of regular givers. Right now, everything we do is made up of 22 amazing people giving somewhere in the region of about 220 pounds per month. We worked out just 14 more people will enable the vision for the next year of everything we want to see in relaunching weekly services across two locations here in London and uh, to create the structure and staffing of a proper multi-site church that so we can be strong and set up for the future and thirdly investing in digital evangelism what, what an opportunity to occupy um, the creative and digital space and to get the message of Jesus Christ um, out to as many people as possible and um, I'd love to just invite in this moment we've been talking about it for ages so I know um, I know there's people who want to jump on board right now it's good just to draw a bit of a finish line and and so I'd love to invite you to do that if you'd like to be a part of that hey please do uh, jump in right now we'll just create a few moments so you want to head to the website we've got a pledge form on there so uh, you can have to figure out your your additional browsers your additional devices I don't know how you're going to manage it but hey keep keep this uh, YouTube video on as you're doing it maybe and um, but you can head to c3reflect.church slash vision builders and we've got all of that info including that presentation from from week one and that's there and uh, right in the middle you'll see a green button I think it says become a vision builder and you can click that and that'll take you to the form and you can put name and email just so we can contact you and also just know who's who's a part because um, we want to measure as well I think that's why we really want you to tell us is so that we can go oh cool this is where we are and then we'll be able to make some decisions off the base of uh, how we've done as a, a church and the decisions we've all made so you can click that in you can let us know how much you want to give whether that's going to be a monthly gift or a one-off gift and where you've given um, before so um, I'll just give you a few moments um, to do that but let me just say thank you um, to every person every one of those 22 people who've been sewing into the history of the church and the present and every person who's jumping on board now we we just count it as an immense immense honor and to be a part of a generous, thriving community and a church that is not just ours, but all of us. Um, to be a part of genuine, healthy community. Uh, we're just, man, we are so blessed by you. Uh, I know you think we're like the pastors, we should be, you know, we don't, you know, but no, we are, we are blessed by you. We thank God for you. We are grateful for you. We love being a part of this church. We love seeing our kids grow up in this house and to get to rub shoulders with some of the finest people. So uh, God bless you. Thank you for being a part of this whole crazy season. I'm so excited. 2022. Um, this is the beginning of a whole heap of stuff that God is going to do for his C3 Reflect and I want to say thank you for being a part of it. This is just the beginning. Um, two locations, it's just the beginning. 
And uh, right now, we're just getting our house in order. We're getting things ready. But let me just uh, prophesy right now. We, we will start more locations around London, around the UK. We're going to start more gatherings uh, because our world needs Jesus. And uh, there is good news. That's what the gospel means. It's the announcement. And I don't know about you, but I want to announce to the whole world. And now we've got the metaverse. <laughs> it just keeps opening up. There's so much to do, but it's going to be awesome. We're pacing ourselves. We're enjoying the journey. And I uh, hope you've been blessed being a part of this community um, as well. Hey, uh, we've got cool stuff coming up. We've got dinner parties um, coming up um, every other Wednesday. And also we have got some Christmas dinner parties coming up. So those dates will be coming out uh, really soon as well. Can you believe Christmas 21? I mean, gosh, how fast has the last couple of years? It's gone. It's like, oh my gosh, it's going so fast. But man, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I uh, hope you are too. And um, yeah, thank you so much for being a part of today. Um, God bless you guys. And um, we'll be sharing over the next couple of weeks. Hope you, hopefully you've had enough time to fill in the form now and be a part of this moment. It's a holy moment. I'm going to pray now. And uh, in it, over the next couple of weeks, we'll share uh, about where we are and our decisions are off the back of that as a team. So, hey, super amazing. Let's pray right now. So uh, let's just take a moment, close your eyes, lift your hands. Holy Spirit, we thank you so much for this holy moment. Vision Builders 2021. And uh, God, we just, we want to thank you for the beautiful thing that is your church that you, you've set us in a family and in community. And I pray as we come together in generosity and contribution today, God, we just thank you that you are gonna bless our unity. You're gonna bless our alignment. God, I pray anoint us. And uh, God, I cause, cause, cause every single person to prosper. We pray, let them increase and prosper in every way, not just financial, but God, prosper in their minds, prosper in their souls, God, in their physical body. God, we pray health over the church. God, we pray bless our relationships. God, bless our future, uh, bless our work, bless our families. God, we give you our lives and we thank you for the immense uh, just honor it is to, to serve you and to love you. We pray, God, your blessing upon the church in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Thank you so much for joining us and today. It's been amazing. Um, put something in the chat, put some emojis in there right now, and uh, we will see you very soon. God bless you guys.